Welcome to Get A Word In, a podcast about content marketing. I'm your host, Adam Walker. I'm passionate about sharing stories and knowledge through content, especially in the form of podcasting. In fact, I co-founded Edgewise.media, a podcast-first marketing content agency. On this show, I interview content marketers at some of the top companies in the world and discover what's working for them, what isn't, and most importantly, what's next. So stay tuned and get ready for some great content about content marketing. Our guest on the show today is Layla Rivas, VP of Brand Experience at Pure Storage. Layla, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. Well, I'm excited to chat with you. I know you've got a lot going on, a big thing coming up next week. So thanks for carving out a little bit of time. Uh, Let's start with you. Who are you? What are you about? What do your days look like? What are you working on? All right. Well, who am I? That's a that's a big question. But I'm Layla Rivas, as you mentioned. I currently lead brand marketing at Pure Storage. And so that includes everything from managing the creative team. So serving as a, an executive creative director on content, uh, top of funnel content, brand content with you know, social blogs. We also do, you know, white papers and video. And then I also lead our sponsorships. So we have some sports marketing sponsorships and partnerships. And what else? Yeah, that's pretty much social, like I said, blogs, creative sponsorships. So Okay. All right. That sounds like quite a bit that you're doing. Quite quite a few things. You look yeah, at your video, busy. white papers, yeah, all the things. Okay. Well, well then you've got a great perspective for this conversation. So so let's start content marketing. Like what's working right now? What are you what are you excited about? You know, I think what's working and and one thing I did do with my teams is I brought content marketing and social media together. So instead of having a bunch of different groups that were creating content in somewhat, you know, of a silo, I have brought social closer to content and content is really our our blogs. We're also, um, I have a brand marketing team. So really pivoting the team from just looking at themselves as content marketing and also looking at them at themselves as a brand marketing team. So that may, that meant making some new hires that meant um, making some adjustments in terms of people's scope and how they envision the work they're doing. But I think what's working is bringing things more closely together and aligned with an editorial calendar You know, we've always had that with blogs and we've had it with social, but they've been, you know, they were historically somewhat separate. And you'll see that at a lot of, I think, large enterprise companies, particularly in the tech world, the um, disciplines, you know, are often broken apart. And I think one of the reasons why I really liked this role is that it brings areas together and allows me to bring things together. And so when you have content marketing that is operationalized efficiently and together, So you've got a blog piece. Well, if that's top five tips for um, containerization, talking some uh, tech terms, but, you know, it would be taking that blog post and then also looking at it and breaking out the five tips into a video for social, a micro video, something like a 15 second video. It would be turning those into each piece, each into an infographic uh, visual or a, a data point to share on Twitter, et cetera. So um, it's really bringing things more closely together. And I think that's what, you know, what doesn't work is when you have different disciplines and groups split across companies and each one is tasked with creating content and you just see like an, uh, an excessive amount of content without any clear KPIs set prior, numeric KPIs, how many views you expect to get, what's your promotion plan, do you have an advertising budget, you know, as opposed to just creating content for content's sake. So those are the things I see working. And then, you know, the not working part is really the the siloed content creation, the you need to create five blog posts without any kind of outcomes associated with those blog posts. Yeah, just, I mean, just go create blog. Like, every, we need blog posts. Just create I'm telling you, every whatever. company I work, this is a, this is a <laughs> goal of different, like, product marketers. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you hope to achieve with that? Mm-hmm. What's, how are you going to get it yeah. out there? What's your plan? So mm-hmm. I work a lot with groups to help them set those benchmarks as to what okay. good looks like. Yeah, I, lo- I, lo- I love that. Yeah, I, that's just, we just need a blog post. Why? I'm, I don't know. We just need a 
block. I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. So I'm glad yeah. that you're uh, having success in not taking that approach. So, well, so I'm uh, sorry. So, so you mentioned what's working. You also mentioned what's not working, which is, uh, which is the groups that are split uh, across companies. Is there anything else that you're seeing in content marketing that's also not working that you would like to speak to? When you look at like things as they've been done before and you say, oh, well, this is how we did them. So I see, I did this at my last company and this is what we did. And so you just continue to do what you did maybe like six years ago, but the, mm -hmm. the climate has changed. The platforms have changed. Consumption behaviors have changed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, podcasting being one of them. So I think when you think about what doesn't work, it's often trying to do things the way you've done them before that you think is how it should be done, but it's not necessarily the way it should be done anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, you're totally right. I mean, we, we get in our ruts, we, we get our tools and our ideas and this is what works and it doesn't always work. That was like Twitter yeah. chats. That was the big thing, you know, 10 years ago. And yeah. then for a while, companies still kept trying to do them. And it's like, nobody's chatting with us anymore. And they think it's a reflection of their company, but it's actually more a reflection of the nature of Twitter being now more consumption-based rather than um, chat-based, really. The engagement between people is not quite, you know, depending on the people, let's say, is not quite as <laughs> It's dangerous to talk about Twitter these days because I, 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 I feel like uh, I feel like the Twitter that existed six months ago and the Twitter that exists today are two very, very different landscapes and very different users. Yeah. Am, am I wrong about that? Is that what you're seeing as well? Well, you know, I think that journalists and media are still on Twitter. Technical audiences, you know, like developers and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, I think are, are still there. I just think the way people use it is different. And I, I do think, you know, they, they did lose quite a, a number of followers. And I, I have seen attrition at every yeah. company I've worked in terms of that's the one platform that doesn't appear to be growing in terms of followers. You know, again, they could have capped out the audience for that platform. And then at this point, it's a matter of just continuing to re-engage with it. Yeah. We do still see some good traction when it comes to video views and, you know, like I said, engagement from uh, media and analysts are still, um, you know, on Twitter looking for news and mm -hmm. posting the articles they wrote. And so there's there's definitely, you know, we, we still are present there, yeah. but it's changed a lot. And in, in I, I would even say just the last eight years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, all right. So, so now that we're talking about channels as well, I mean, are there any other channels where you're seeing success, where you're focusing more than you were previously? Like, what channels should we be thinking about? Well, you know, I think it all it all depends on the kind of company mm -hmm. that you are. You know, right. um, in B two B tech, without you know, we don't sell um, Pure Storage is you know a top data storage company, but we sell to you know, the CIOs, the data storage admins, your, you know, transformation officers and things like that. So we're not selling, we don't have a consumer arm, whereas mm -hmm. some right. of our larger, um, you know, what we would call legacy, older competitors also have consumer arms. So they might be present on platforms like TikTok or Snap, chat and things like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas for our audience, and we'd still continue to go, hey, when will it, when do we think is the right time to jump into a new space with a younger install base, so to speak? I would say LinkedIn is definitely core to our business, particularly because you can target so effectively on LinkedIn. Yes, it's more expensive, let's say, than a Twitter, but you can target really well. And so, you know, that's really our core social platform. And then, you know, of course, we have our own platforms, our blogs, our website, and then working with SMEs from our business units or solution engineers to maybe they're blogging on Medium and we'll share a uh, post from Medium or they'll do an Ask Me Anything on Reddit. You know, like we, we definitely like to leverage third party platforms where it makes sense, collaborations with influencers. So in terms of content marketing that works, really authentic, what I would call, you know, high affinity high relevancy partnerships with influencers on places like YouTube 
you know, we, we did a really successful collaboration with a group called Linus Tech Tips. And oh, nice. okay. um, yeah, and it was extremely successful for us. Um, I love that. You know, reasonable investment, great yield, authentic audience that is really into talking SSDs and um, and VME and all of this, you know, technical. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the nerdy <laughs> stuff. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, it was stuff like that is great, and we test and learn, and then we operationalize and create a program out of those successful kind of what I call um, beta tests, you know, mm-hmm. it's important to do that in marketing. That That's mm-hmm. really what I think the excessive planning cycle where you want to plan every single detail for the year. I'm a Capricorn and I do believe, you know, call me Californian, but I very much adhere to some of my um, yeah. words too. Yeah. And I'm a planner, you know? Yeah. And, however, I think with marketing, you have to leave, uh, a, some room to test because things do change and you do discover, oh, we want to have an opportunity to do this partnership. Good ideas come from different places and you want to be able to jump on an opportunity that seems like a great idea that came from a new place or a, a, a good idea. And so that's where I think that kind of mentality works so that you can kind of test and learn in between gotcha. your tent pole planning cycle. Hmm. Okay. I love that. All right. Yeah. Planning ahead, but test and learn. Leave some room for testing. That's that's critical. Absolutely. Okay. Um, all right. So then so the last question related to you know content marketing, content creation. If you had to focus on just one thing, I don't know, let's say for the next quarter, uh, what one thing would you just double down on and focus on? One thing for next quarter. Well, um, I'm focusing on brand. So really looking at brand marketing opportunities, again, from the test and learn, I go into market and then I test and learn, you know, A-B tests, different lines, different creative. And then the second half of the year, I'll be focused on optimizing what I've seen and and investing more money. So instead of investing it all at once, I invest in phases so that I know what's working and don't um, have any waste, you know, with the macroeconomic climate and our CFO, I listen and I'm like, we are going to, you know, batten down the hashes and be yeah. really, you know, extra cautious and extra smart about it. So I will be focusing on brand. I think every company should be focusing on brand. There is no reason why brand can't be performative. And if you see a, a lot of the articles about Airbnb refocusing on brand and Adidas as well. It's incredibly important because you can do full funnel campaigns from brand to demand. So I'll be focusing there. I'll also be focusing on generative AI and, you know, Google just announced some new intro classes, which I think I'm going to take because we are looking at ways of making things like you know, I I don't as somebody who was a writer for uh, a lot of my career and still do I still do a lot of writing myself. There are benefits to AI in the sense of having AI develop an outline. Yeah, having oh, yeah. AI develop focus questions. You know, having AI look at. Um, I, I've seen less. You know, a lot of it is just how you ask the questions. Mm-hmm. I work with someone who's um, our chief security officer. I believe that's his title. I don't want to um, mess it up because he's uh, brilliant. Retinder is his name. And he is very gifted at also knowing like how to get chat GPT to create tables and uploading a blog post you've already written and asking what should be next in the series, things like that. So we're working at real, looking at more advanced ways to use AI to save right. us time. Not necessarily right for us, because as someone who is a creative at heart and in my background, there are ways in which you can leverage technology for creativity, but then there are ways in which it does skirt the boundaries of um, IP, you know, yeah. intellectual yeah. property and yeah. pulling from artists that are already online. And I do have a problem with that. And I think it's unethical too. You know, you've got to pay people for their creative. So um, we are looking at ways to use it responsibly. Right. Absolutely. Well, that's great. That's great. I love that. I love that. And I and I totally agree. I think AI is uh, is a great 
supplemental tool for a lot of things, um, yes. but not, not necessarily a replacement tool. So, all right, Layla, well, let me see if I can summarize what we've talked about so far. And then you let me know if you have anything to fill in or any gaps or final thoughts. So related to what's working with content marketing, you, you brought content marketing and social media together. So they're not in silos anymore, which I love, by the way, content marketing uh, that is optionalized efficiently. So you talked about like take a blog post, break it down into micro videos and infographics and then tweets and stats for tweets. And then just bringing everything more closely together is what's working, which I thousand percent agree on. What's not working are groups split across companies that are all creating content for no good reason with no KPIs and just throwing out all kinds of content for absolutely no reason without any point behind it. So siloed content creation is not good. And uh, doing the things that have been done before just because you've done them before is also not good. You said it worked six years ago, doesn't mean it's gonna work today. Like we talked about, Twitter has dramatically changed in six years and what worked then will not work now. So for channels, back to Twitter, you mentioned it's very different than it was a few years ago. Uh, it also depends on what kind of company you are. So B2B is gonna be a different channel than B2C. But for you, LinkedIn is core because the targeting is so effective, which I totally agree with. And you're working on collaborations with influencers. You mentioned an influencer campaign on YouTube that went really well. Um, and then planning ahead really helps because you're a Capricorn and that's how we roll. So uh, planning <laughs> ahead is always a good thing. And there should be no emergencies in marketing. Let's just be real here. So I'm just throwing that part in. That's just my own anecdote. Thank you for uh, that. For, for, for focus, uh, you're working on brand. And I love that because brand marketing still works. You can test and learn. You can optimize what's working. And then you can choose to invest more in what's already working so that money is not wasted. And so your CFO doesn't get upset. So uh, is that a good summary? Did I miss anything? And do you have anything you want to add to that? Wow, that was a great summary. Yes. <laughs> Are you a Capricorn too, actually? I mean, I, 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 I was, I'm December. That's Capricorn, right? I think so. Yeah, that's, that seems right. So yeah, yeah. I think so. yeah late December. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I like to plan. Planning is fun. I like it. I don't, I tell people all the time, like in every role I've had, I'm like, there are no marketing emergencies. Don't come at with me with a last minute emergency. That, that should never exist. There's, there's PR emergencies all day long, but there are not marketing emergencies. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm reading a great book during our Mercedes partner summit in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. okay. We had a speaker by the name of Mo Gawat who wrote a book. I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, sorry, Mo, if I'm not, but he wrote a book called solve for happy. He was chief business officer of Google X. Okay. And I bring that up because I was feeling the last, you know, year that there were a lot of emergencies always and, you know, just feeling a lot of stress. You know, there were a lot yeah. of changes and our business works quickly and high expectations. And I started reading his book and it helped put things into, into perspective in the way you're talking about in terms of what really is an emergency, mm. how to kind of break the cycle of overthinking one particular issue mm -hmm. or problem and knowing yeah. when to get your mind off that stuck thought, let's say. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I love, I love it. I love there actually reminds me of another book that I read called a happier hour. That's kind of like similar about that. And I just listened to a podcast about it today on my walk with my dog. So I'll, I'll see if I can find that link and maybe send it over to you. So yeah, this was, uh, Layla, this was great. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you on speed dial for uh, another show sometime soon. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Adam. Thanks for listening to Get a Word In, brought to you by Edgewise.media, a podcast-first marketing content agency. To learn more about Edgewise, visit www.edgewise.media. I'm your host, Adam Walker. To connect with me, check out my blog at adamjwalker.com. Thanks for listening and make sure to subscribe now so you don't miss our next great conversation about content marketing.